This is a video that a few of our subscribers have suggested in the comments before, and one that my boss suggested a couple of days ago, so I finally had to bite the bullet and give it a go. One of the difficulties here was in choosing whether or not to include collectively terrible decisions that went in favour or against teams, such as Italy at the 1934 World Cup or South Korea at the 2002 World Cup. Ultimately, we're going to make this seven purely about individual dreadful decisions, and then we may take a look at seven footballing injustices in the future, if that's something you'd all like to see. So here are our seven worst refereeing decisions of all time. Maradona's Hand of God We toiled with whether or not to include Maradona's Hand of God here, ahead of some infamous decisions such as goals hitting the crossbar and being given, or balls that blatantly crossed the line not being awarded as goals. In the end, El Diego's fame cheating against England sneaks in though. Certainly one of the most high profile refereeing mistakes of all time, and one of the most painful from an English perspective. Diego Maradona's handball, which proved crucial in Argentina's win over England at the 1986 World Cup, seemed so obvious to everyone barring the officials that day. Quite how Ali bin Nasser of Tunisia thought the 5 foot 5 Maradona had beaten a 6 foot plus Shilton to the ball with his head, we're not quite sure, but he did and Argentina went on to win the World Cup. Ratin sees red. Let it not be said that there is any bias here at HITC 7s. From a wretched decision that was given in favour of Argentina against England in 7th, we turn to a bizarre call which went England's way to the disgust of the Argentinians in 6th. Boca Juniors legend and Argentina's captain at the 1966 World Cup, Antonio Ratin, was sent off in the quarter-final against England, with the German referee saying the decision was due to violence of the tongue. Given that the ref didn't speak Spanish, this seems a little contentious. Some Argentines believe there to be an Anglo-German conspiracy to knock Argentina out. Whether that's true, we've no idea, but it was certainly a baffling decision, and host nations at World Cups have typically been rather fortunate when it's come to refereeing decisions. Palace's Stanchion Curse We said this was a 7 for one-off incidents, but in this case, you can take your pick from two. Ever wondered why goalposts no longer have stanchions? Well, this is one of the reasons, and Crystal Palace will no doubt have been delighted to have seen the back of them. The Eagles suffered some rotten luck in what became known as Palace's stanchion curse. In 1980, Clive Allen saw his free kick thunder into the goal, and in 2009, Freddie Sears scored a close-range effort against Bristol City. Both perfectly good goals, both hit the stanchion at the back of the goal, and both were not given by referees. Poor Palace. Vickers sent off for helping stewards. Okay. So this one is a little different to the others in this seven, but just as absurd. During a game between Dorchester and Haven and Waterlooville, a streaker ran onto the field of play wearing a mankini. After the stewards failed to catch him, Dorchester's player manager Ashley Vickers rugby tackled him to the ground. Despite the stewards thanking him, the referee sent Vickers off in a bizarre turn of events. Well, you can't please everyone. Graham Poles three yellow cards. English referee Graham Pohl was one of the most highly regarded officials in the world in 2006, and after impressive displays in his first two games, he was being touted by some as the potential referee of the World Cup final. However, in Pohl's third game in charge of the tournament between Croatia and Australia, he made a horrible mistake. Having already sent two players off, Pohl managed to show the Croatian left-back Josip Simonic three yellow cards before eventually sending him off. He retired from refereeing international games after the embarrassing mistake. Brazilian ball boy scores a goal. During a 2006 FPF Cup game in Brazil, a regional competition between the teams of Sao Paulo, one of the oddest goals ever scored took place. With Atletico Sorocaba leading 1-0 in the 89th minute, Santa Cruzense had a shot which went wide of the goal. A cunning young ball boy sensed an opportunity though, and tapped the ball into the goal whilst the referee's back was turned. Somehow, despite the ball clearly going wide and no players celebrating, the ref was convinced and Santa Cruz then snatched a late draw. Equatorial Guinea defender catches the ball. Topping this list is not only the worst decision in football history, but also the strangest and most surreal one you'll ever see. The first entry on this list from the women's game, and it takes top spot, with this incident occurring in the 2011 Women's World Cup, in Australia and Equatorial Guinea's second group game. With Australia leading 1-0, they were on the attack again. A ball into the box was flicked against the post, before rebounding to a Guinea defender. Not only did the Equatorial Guinea player handle the ball, she actually caught the ball with both hands and held it for a number of seconds before releasing it. Miffed Australian players couldn't believe their eyes and were even more horrified when the referee waved play on and the game continued as if no wrongdoing had been done. 
Thankfully, the incident didn't affect the result, as Australia ran out 3-2 winners. So that's it for our top 7. But from Reading's ghost goal against Watford to Emerson Acuna's shocking dive, there are so, so many more honourable or dishonourable mentions. Thanks for watching, let us know some of the worst decisions you've ever witnessed in the comments, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to HITC7s.